All right, so let's uh, let's head on actually. And from that perspective, from the more kind of uh, boss fighting design, we will head uh, up to the design of narration. And um, I'm really happy to have him here, and we can play the video again. And his name is Jan Müller Michaelis, and uh, he's one of the reasons why this company exists. And uh, or actually, he's the main reason. Poki is his uh, nickname, and he is. Um, uh, he's responsible for just uh, brilliant ge adventure games just like this trilogy, Deponia is the name, and actually he writes all the stuff, so he's sitting uh, there and writes all the story, all the narration, so adventure games is more like the kind of more linear way, um, but he will talk about that because he has kind of uh, new ideas about new kinds of the narration in this field, so please warmly welcome Poki, where is he? Is he still there? Oh, there. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope I found out how this works. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, and yeah, uh, as Daniel already said, I uh, want to um, make a small change in perspective. And from my understanding, it should be a, a quite a common perspective. Um, when I began uh, making games, I, I thought that this would be uh, uh, yeah, something that everybody uh, thinks of, but um, I learned to know that uh, that I'm quite uh, uh, one of very few people who look at uh, games from this perspective, um, and it's the uh, perspective of the writer. And uh, before I get to that, I'll introduce myself quickly. Myself, that's me. I'm, uh, I'm called Pokey in the industry and by my friends and colleagues. Uh, so. Yeah, you're free to call me Poké as well. And um, as Stein already pointed out, I'm uh, the father of this guy. His name is Harvey, and uh, he uh, was uh, the sidekick uh, uh, of my protagonist in uh, my first game, Edna and Harvey the Breakout, or Edna bricht aus in German. And um, this was a game that I was doing um, as my diploma thesis uh, back then, uh, almost completely on my own. Um, and I also had to draw everything myself because m the, the graphic artist uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, ran away shortly before <laughs> I, I uh, had to begin the production because I just had a couple of months time to complete the game. Uh, yeah, which was fun for me, but it also led to these irings and <laughs> um, yeah, then I uh, made uh, uh, the game of Deponia. We saw uh, uh, some pictures of that. Uh, uh, gladly, we had um, brilliant artists uh, when we started that. Elsewhere, Rufus may, may have uh, looked like that. Um, also, I wrote uh, um, parts of the story and uh, all the text uh, of The Whispered World. This is Sadwick. Uh, it's al also a point-and-click adventure game. And um, this was uh, the first uh, game I started when we, uh, we began business with our company. It was a new beginning that didn't look like that at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, but let me jump back. Eight years ago, uh, I didn't have the eye rings, I didn't have the beard back then, and I was full of enthusiasm, and I was sitting on my diploma thesis, and I was just thinking, oh, uh, what do I write about? Um, I was, um, uh, yeah, all my life I just wanted to tell stories and I was not so certain about the medium um, in which to write them. And uh, so I uh, began studying uh, media techniques uh, which featured everything I could come up with. And I wanted to draw and I wanted to make music and I wanted to go into film maybe, or theater, or everything was possible, animation. Um, and uh, uh, in media techniques, everything was offered. Um, and uh, um, yeah, something called uh, uh, computer-generated uh, media as well. So um, uh, after I uh, spent a lot of time uh, doing short films, and doing mu music, and doing everything else but uh, studying, um, I, I uh, thought, okay, I, I really need a shortcut through my studies. I think I was uh, already 10 semesters in, <laughs> and uh, I really wanted to find a way through. And the fastest path was, uh, um, 
yeah, was going through computer-generated media. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll take this pass because I'll be, it's the quickest out. And uh, yeah, that was quite fortunate because um, uh, there I learned um, that uh, it's uh, yeah the, the best way to bring all of the other media together, uh, the computer game. So um, as I uh, uh, needed to to find a uh, uh, um, yeah some some thesis some some topic for my uh, diploma thesis, um, I thought okay, I want to be a writer, so I want. Uh, uh, to, to, to create drama, I just, now I, I just uh, took Frodo here as a metaphor for drama. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, if I take drama and uh, make it interactive, there should be lots of <laughs> more drama. So uh, uh, this, this, uh, this was the plan, and so I wrote about that. And um, so, yeah, so I, I began and, and made the game Edna and Harvey the Breakout, and the uh, uh, next thing I know is I met uh, Carsten, who already has been working on <laughs> in, the, uh, in the industry for a long time. And uh, uh, yeah, he invited me to the company he, he was working in at that moment. And the next time I, I know, bam, the Dalek was born. And uh, yeah, uh, this was, like I said, almost eight years ago. And uh, now we are over 100 people working on uh, seven different projects at the moment in Hamburg, and uh, have just opened a new studio, uh, studio in uh, Düsseldorf, and uh, yeah, getting quite busy, um, and still telling stories. And because this is what we chose to do, I wanted to tell stories, and I, uh, um, my, the thesis of my diploma work was uh, there is um, the possibility to get more value, more ex uh, to make the experience better, then you can do it with a non-interactive medium if you're telling your story via an interactive medium like games. And that's what I tried to prove uh, since then, uh, which was um, a very hard start because back then adventure games like we uh, um, grew famous for um, were uh, said that uh, to that point, there was an expert struggle. Uh, this guy is Espen Arces, um, who uh, said, "No, <laughs> telling a game with uh, telling a story uh, with a game, this is you cannot do it. It's impossible." Um, and on the other hand, there was uh, well, was a fraction uh, who said, "No, no, it's the un other way around. It's impossible not to." Uh, 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 tell a story via a game, because games are always stories. I can't say I did agree with both of them, uh, because uh, uh, the right um, um, yeah, uh, is a definition of a story that didn't match what I was up to, because as a writer I want to uh, wrap up an idea. Uh, and uh, so with my definition of story, I was on the side of this guy who said, no, no, this is not possible. Because um, when you want to wrap up an idea and give it to an audience, unchanged this idea, then it's top down. But games are always bottom up. Um, so the, the, the player uh, uh, decides what's going on. So uh, yeah, they had a problem, and I had as well. <laughs> 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 So, uh, uh, but but I I was very very sure that it, uh, that you can do it that you can, in fact, um, wrap up your story, but in an interactive fa fashion and uh, benefit of the uh, interactiveness uh, um of the media. So um, it's clear that uh, what I what I was trying to do is not every game should should have a story. Not every game um, uh, needs. Uh, to have an interactive story, um, um, but um, the most thing you get, I said, I'm quite rare in the industry, and you say, huh? Because uh, almost every uh, blockbuster game will feature a story of some kind, but that's not what I'm talking about, and that's very, very important difference. Um, uh, um, the most uh, thing you get, it's 95% of narrative games, is that um, you have a game, and you uh, 
uh, um, take uh, yeah, a couple of narrative components to improve uh, the experience, which is totally, uh, uh, which is a very good approach. In fact, it makes gaming more interesting. Um, uh, but it's not my approach as a writer, because I have a story, and then I want to uh, 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 tell it via the, the, uh, um, yeah, the medium game. So um, most games use uh, narrative components to illustrate the gameplay, which really works well. And uh, I really love uh, games that do that uh, in a, in a uh, sophisticated fashion. Um, and it's totally uh, legit to, to just take small components of narration for your game. For example, uh, uh, Super Mario uh, has just some aspects of a narrative. You need to, to, to rescue princess. You're an Italian plumber. What, what the heck? It's not important for, for the gameplay to work. But it helps. It makes you connect to something. Um, but as I said, it's not what uh, I'm trying to do when I write a story. Um, so above we have the majority I should uh, have plastered. I hadn't have the time to copy just uh, all the games I could come up with uh, uh, into the above part. And there are very, very few um, uh, uh, games that uh, go into this ca category um, where uh, you the, 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 the starting point for the game is I want to tell a story and then I use a medium game to uh, make it work, to make it work better as if told by just, um, yeah, by just uh, uh, showing it on, on as a movie or something. So again, that's it, w what I'm talk talking about. So um, nobody is arguing anymore that uh, um, that, that games don't, uh, ca can't tell a story. Nobody does that anymore. This expert struggle is over once and for all. Since 2007, the BAFTA Game Awards uh, have the ca uh, category uh, Best Story. Um, but um, when you look at uh, the, the first examples they have, uh, uh, they have put out, it's, uh, all of them are very good games. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, some of them uh, count as uh, to my favorite games. But when you just look at the stories, what is being told, you have to see that uh, if, if they were as a, as a movie in the cinema, you wouldn't go to the movie. <laughs> you maybe wouldn't even go to your, uh, back then, to your DVD store now. You d w wouldn't download them. You would wait until they're out in free TV <laughs> or something. Uh, yeah, so, sorry for Call of Duty. I couldn't come up, come up with. Uh, there is uh, no movie that's just a, a war movie without being an anti-war movie. It's, it's just not happening. So I, it, I took Battleship there because I was really out of <laughs> of uh, ideas. And Heavy Rain is. Um, I put it that to the positive uh, examples, uh, using the gameplay to tell the story and not the other way around using the story to illustrate the gameplay. Uh, but story-wise, it's a Denzel Washington movie. And sorry, I'm <laughs> not even thinking about watching them on free TV. It's <laughs> and maybe it's just a <laughs> can I see <laughs> just it's Denzel Washington, maybe. Um, so um, uh, this is my favorite example. I'm always using that, that uh, since a couple of years. Uh, in the presentation to illustrate, illustrate the point, maybe because I'm really um, very, very fond of Ghostbusters the movie. And of its, uh, it, it seems to be a very light-footed uh, uh, comedy, but uh, in fact it's, um, it's very brilliantly uh, uh, told and very intelligent story, as I like to <laughs> pretend for myself. <laughs> um, so uh, when they announced that the original writers uh, and actors from uh, Ghostbusters the movie uh, joined together again to not only play uh, uh, the voices of their uh, 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 infamous characters, um, but also to, to write the story of the game. Yeah, okay, it's a marketing stunt, everybody knows that, but you can dream. 
Um, so uh, I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. Maybe they finally come up with a good story. But um, in fact, I didn't play uh, the game through. And um, I, I think the example, uh, I started to think when, when, when I played it, what's, what's, uh, what's the problem? Because the dialogue a little bit seemed like Ghostbusters. It could catch up. Maybe it led to some interesting point. But I really didn't want to uh, play it through. Um, to, 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 um, yeah, I, I wrapped my mind around it and uh, tried to analyze what was the problem. Um, and uh, so uh, let's get back to the movie. This is the structure of a typical Hollywood movie. It's um, the dumped down version of the hero's journey. It's uh, something, uh, the, the uh, paradigm that Hollywood wraps around. And Ghostbusters is really uh, straight to the point of this Hollywood paradigm. Uh, um, um, three, uh, three act structure uh, with plot points, and you can stop at the exact minute. Uh, uh, I think it's 30 minutes in the, in the movie. You can exactly stop. Oh, back then, it's, I think it's 20 minutes. Um, it was 20 minutes, but uh, you can exactly stop there, and uh, plot point one is happening. Even something uh, uh, optical in the movie is happening to illustrate here the story takes another turn. So uh, it's very, very typical. Um, uh, yeah, we, we this, uh, this paradigm. Um, yeah, we, we owe it to Sid Field. He's, yeah, Sid Field, he's <laughs> great guy. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is what Ghostbusters movie looks like. And um, uh, we all know the story. It's a, a bunch of scientists who are still uh, working on the university. Um, but who are thrown out of the university, who are making up a company, and they have their first client, and, um, but, but they have uh, problems with the authorities, and um, then, uh, yeah, the, the, the case they're working at gets, uh, uh, gets, gets really uh, uh, problematic, and finally uh, something happens that everything goes Twinkie-shaped, and uh, they're out to save the day. Who hasn't seen Ghostbusters? It must sound strange. Um, yeah, that's the plot of Ghostbusters, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, they are catching ghosts. Um, <laughs> but um, to show that on, uh, on the scale uh, of, the, of the, the plot line, uh, um, when you uh, look at the, 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 the movie, there's just one point uh, we all think, when we think of Ghostbusters, it's about uh, them running with their proton packs through the streets and catching ghosts. But uh, in fact, there's just one sequence uh, where it actually happens. There's one sequence where, where they learn how to do it, of course. And there's, at the end, uh, the boss fight <laughs> where they... Uh, oh, where is he? The boss fight where... Um, uh, where, where uh, they have to, to do it again. But, um, yeah, the... Uh, the main part where uh, it's happening is, is here in the movie. They're running around catching ghosts. It was so um, uninteresting for the, for the writers that they put it in a montage. <laughs> they uh, made a two-minute sequence out of it, putting music under it, just letting it pass. <laughs> you know they're catching ghosts. Okay, can we get on with the plot? That, that, that was uh, uh, this part of, of Ghostbusters. So, um, compared to the Ghostbusters the game, this is the gameplay. It's always catching ghosts, catching ghosts, catching ghosts, catching ghosts, without the dramaturgic uh, importance of learning how to do it, or uh, maybe at the end you have a boss fight again that is similar to... Uh, but it was just on, over and over again catching ghosts. And I think uh, what, what lost me with, with, with this game is that I just thought, okay, I got it, they are catching ghosts, get on with the plot. But every time they sp uh, skip to the plot, which is, of course, uh, told here, and here, and here, and here, uh, they just uh, switched from the medium game to the medium film. They just showed me what went on. So I, it was not interactive, I couldn't do anything. Uh, and so it was not an interactive story. It was, I, I couldn't play the Ghostbusters. I just could play this small sequence of Ghostbusters action, and that's not really not what the movie is about. So, 
Hm? Ah, falscher Knopf. <lacht> uh, so, what, what about all the other stuff? The Romans, uh, the, the weird, uh, the, 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 um, uh, yeah, the, the progress of the characters who, who are going from chauvinistic uh, to, to, to uh, starting their first uh, um, yeah, relationship towards a real person and not to... Uh, yeah, what, what about the madness, the, 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 the fun, and what about the, all the coolness? Why can't we do uh, other stuff than uh, action in, in our games? There, there must be some way to do it, because uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be depressing not to. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and uh, that is, in fact, what, what I'm trying to do. There's uh, yeah, try to think of a game that, that centers about just one aspect. You can, of course, take the slice and say, okay, I want a game uh, where I'm struggling with politics. Maybe there is one, but it's <laughs> not a famous one, of course. Who wants to uh, have the structure of uh, <laughs> struggling with politics, struggling with politics, and so on. The other thing is catchy, of course, but um, to have a whole story, you need all the components, of course, and not just one slice of it. So um, again, I want, uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to go there, and that's why I feel, because I I, I can do that. I <laughs> um, I have my company, and I'm 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 writing the games, and nobody's coming and saying, uh, no, you have to catch more ghosts in your game. So I'm allowed to do that, and it's really like I'm feeling I'm completely alone on this huge new continent and. Uh, looking at the forest and said, where do I go first? And uh, standing there paralyzed and, uh, uh, yeah. And of course, uh, I began with interactive drama. That, uh, that was one point uh, that, that has not been done enough. Um, how uh, can, you, can, can you make the drama of a game interactive, of a story interactive? And it's quite easy. It's, uh, in fact, it's, it's getting boring <laughs> because uh, drama is about conflict and conflict is about choices uh, that are weighed equally. You cannot decide between those two. And that's a very easy thing you can do with games. That is, um, yeah, that, that, that's not very, very, very hard. Of course, you have to build it up uh, to give this choice a meaning um, to make it real drama, this, this uh, conflict, this choice. But that's something games can really do easily, and they do it better than movies, because when you have the choice, you really have much other uh, emotions towards what's happening, as if just looking at the hero on the, on the screen who decides for the other, the one or the other. So you have a little bit anxiety, but having to choose yourself, that puts you in great distress, and that makes you really feel the conflict. It makes it your own conflict without harming you. And so that that's, should be a known brainer. Many people should do it that, and I think I, I played that a couple of times in other games as well, but not often. Um, uh, that's something that's really uh, much more fun for me because it's much harder to do interactive comedy. Um, there's the, 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 the bandwidth of comedy is, is so huge. <laughs> there are so many different types of comedy, why we laugh. And to find a way to make it better through interaction is really something that's uh, great fun for me, because uh, it's this new continent. It's very new land. Nobody has claimed its stake there. And uh, just uh, trying to, for example, uh, yeah, to be mean. Of course, you like all the uh, Monty Python sketches where an annoying person comes into a store and uh, just keeps on nagging the, the shopkeeper. But uh, being the one who, who comes in and decides how long you nag a person, that, for example, goes really well. I tried that with my first game. <laughs> and I, I put it in two different spaces there in the game because I, I myself found it so, so funny to click these, uh, these lines over and over again. Very simple thing. Um, then. Uh, yeah, but uh, there, there are other things like, for example, changes in perspective, where you hear a dialogue, uh, how a character is uh, um, uh, introduced, they talk about him telling who he is, and you're the one who's uh, working in the background 
Um, and it's the beginning of the second part of Deponia. Um, uh, and I had to come around with an idea how to establish Rufus for the, guy, uh, for the guys who haven't played the first part of Deponia. So I had to establish him again. And I said, oh, how can I do this? Of course, um, I let somebody talk about him and uh, saying the complete offer, uh, opposite of what we uh, know Rufus to be. He says, no, no, Rufus is a good guy, and he has changed, and uh, he is <laughs> completely uh, OK running around in your house. Uh, the doc is saying that to the, to the grandma here. And uh, Rufus in the background, we are steering him, and he's uh, yeah, setting her, her flat on fire <laughs> and uh, almost killing her bird. And, uh, that, that was something. This is something new. I, I haven't played that before, uh, just uh, playing with this perspective. And we can do it interactively. It's mu much more fun when you actually do the havoc in the background when somebody else has a change of perspective gag. But interactively, it's more fun. And, and so on, and so on. Um, I think I don't have the time to, to, to uh, get more into detail. detail. So what about interactive ro romance? I have put a little bit into the, uh, the Fona tri tri trilogy, but I think uh, my main focus was comedy there. Yeah, okay, uh, David Cage has done that in, in um, Heavy Rain already. Um, but there are, <laughs> <laughs> there are other things. Uh, interactive midwifery, for example, giving birth to a child uh, in interactive faction or interactive grief, uh, maybe even an interactive depression or suicide attempts or something. Okay. Of them, uh, David Cage has already done in Heavy Rain and uh, in Beyond His Soul. Um, yeah, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it feels like standing on this new continent, and there are so, so many roads uh, we haven't taken yet. Nobody has ever seen in a game. Um, and everybody's just still focusing on making action interactive. You know how to do that. Why not the other stuff? And you should be quick because uh, David Cage brought a bulldozer. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Volky. You do really like the Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe you should. Uh, I think uh, David Cage hasn't done anything on Ghostbusters. Be quick. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any questions to Pokey, please? Uh, hi, at first. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned that you had to re-establish Rufus for the, uh, for the second part of Deponia again. Uh, by the way, nice trilogy, I played it Thank all through. Thank you very much. Uh, um, and I wanted to know if, uh, if there are really that much customers that are uh, coming to the second part, but not the first one. Um, because have, it's, it's uh, at least I have read it in reviews. I, uh, I'm, I'm reading much of the reviews and I'm reading much of the feedback. Uh, and I can't say that uh, I have read only one post where anybody ha has stated I haven't played the first part, but the second part was uh, something. But um, the reviewers say, say, OK, I haven't played, played the first part, so it was completely new. But thanks, God, uh, I think that is an achievement on its own. <laughs> Maybe I just did it for the reviewers, <laughs> respectively. Thanks. Any more questions to Pokey? Then uh, just a short question from my perspective. What do you think about virtual reality and telling stories in virtual yeah, reality uh, while being it's inside? It's will it, it will be huge, it, uh, the, the possibilities. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 get, <laughs> I get nervous. That's the reason why I drive home <laughs> today. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really getting nervous about the, the possibilities and the, the ideas. And it's really, yeah, like I said, it's really a, a very, very interesting time. And I think that's one point that I wanted to do in the very beginning is that I really think that uh, interactive storytelling will be, has a potential of being the medium to uh, take over storytelling. It will be. Uh, everybody, of, uh, everybody knows that in, in the future we will uh, tell our stories in, again in an interactive fashion. So, uh, and, but now is the time to, to uh, find the structures, find the way how it, uh, how it works. And, uh, yeah, th so it's a very, 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 very interesting time for, for writers to come to the uh, gaming industry. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Pokey, that was it. Thank you much.